Welcome viewers to our ongoing program, Nuclear Free Future Conversation, coming to you from Burlington, Vermont, from Town Meeting TV, Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy. We are all remote now, and this program is coming to you from Zoom. I'm your host, Margaret Harrington, and the, the program is, of course, Nuclear Free Future Conversation. The guest, welcome our wonderful guest, uh, Chris Williams, from the Citizens Awareness Network and from the, the Vermont Yankee Decommissioning Alliance. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, it's good to see you. And we, are, uh, we, we agreed on a title for this timely program. It's called, the title is The Hazards of High-Level Nuclear Waste at Vermont Yankee. So you're bringing us up to speed, Chris, because a lot has been, has been going on. There is the, uh, so would you speak to the, the issues that are, are current and related to uh, what we're interested here in Vermont is in the Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel. We're aware, the citizens of Vermont are aware and those who are concerned about uh, the the, the closed Vermont Yankee. What exactly is the Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel? Uh, well, as everybody knows, things have uh, quieted down quite a bit uh, with regard to Vermont Yankee because it uh, went, as the uh, industry says, cold and dark at the end of 2014. Since then, uh, many of us have been monitoring uh, the closure and um, the decommissioning activity of the plant. Uh, for many decades, there was a, a panel called the Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel, uh, which met frequently um, and got reports uh, for legislators uh, about what was going on at the operating Vermont Yankee. Uh, with the closure, the uh, legislature updated the Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel and transformed it into the Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel. And the, uh, the Citizens Advisory Panel includes, um, has included um, uh, people appointed by the Speaker of the House, the President Pro Tem of the Senate, and the Governor. And so we had um, uh, citizens, as well as uh, members of state government, including the Vermont Department of Public Service, the um, uh, Vermont uh, uh, Health Department, and, uh, and other entities, including the owners of the plant, which for the longest time was Entergy and is now North Star. And what the, what the commission or, or the, the panel does, they meet regularly. Um, now they're down to about four meetings a year, uh, is act as a forum for not just uh, uh, the local community, but the broader community, including uh, the states of Massachusetts and New Hampshire, as well as the rest of Vermont. And it's an opportunity to ask the company questions as well as asking um, uh, representatives of different state departments questions regarding the status of decommissioning at Vermont Yankee. And uh, lately, uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, has been asked by a lot of different members of the public uh, has to do with the high level nuclear waste that's stored on the site. Uh, right. Those are the spent fuel rods. Right, and, and Chris, what is the main issue about that? Is it about transporting the waste to points west? Uh, that's part of it. I, I think it's important for everyone to recognize that what we're dealing with here is a large amount of a very long-lived uh, <clears throat> radioactive, um, <clears throat> excuse me, radioactive, uh, uh, waste stream. These are the uh, irradiated fuel rods. They're now stored in uh, 58 casks um, on site. These are sealed containers surrounded by uh, concrete. 
and they're sitting on a concrete pad, if you will, a parking lot uh, kind of a affair. Uh, there is no uh, repository at this point to take those, uh, those fuel rods. And we're not alone. There are fuel rods sitting in casks and in pools uh, at 100 sites around the country. What's significant right now is, uh, is that there have been ongoing proposals to create um, what are called centralized interim storage facilities which they allege uh, are temporary. Uh, one is uh, proposed for West Texas in Andrews County and the other uh, in New Mexico. The owners of Vermont Yankee, North Star, are also the principals of the people who run uh, the, uh, the dump and the proposed high-level waste site in Andrews County, Texas, waste control specialists. And there's been a lot of dialogue about moving our waste, the waste created here in Vermont, uh, to the site in Texas. And this is being proposed more as a, a business plan than sound public policy. And so uh, many of us think it's very important that this issue is raised and fully discussed before the nuclear uh, decommissioning panel the Citizens Advisory Panel, because there are issues regarding environmental justice. Uh, many, many people, including uh, uh, many powerful politicians in both New Mexico and Texas, want nothing to do with our high-level nuclear waste. And we shouldn't be moving it to a temporary site. We should be looking uh, for a, a permanent site based on sound public policy and science. And I'll I'll stop for a minute. Okay, well, well, you just brought up to me the, the, uh, the word ownership comes to mind. So actually, Vermonters own this nuclear waste, and we also own responsibility for it. And so that the, the Citizens Advisory Panel is there to, uh, to give us information, to discuss the issues. And do they have the power, Chris, to come to a conclusion? Or to uh, what does their advice go to? Uh, where does it go to the Vermont legislature or, or where? Yes, they 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 uh, issue advisory opinions to the legislature. They have written to our federal delegation regarding the uh, In 2015, <clears throat> they signed on to a letter with the other. Yankee sites um, in New England, Maine Yankee, Yankee Row, and Connecticut Yankee, um, seemingly supporting this uh, concept of centralized interim storage. It kind of came across as, you know, anywhere, we don't care where it goes, just get it out of Vermont. And many of us see that as being extremely irresponsible and uh, uh, downright uncaring when it comes to these other communities. Uh, and it's our responsibility, uh, since we um, uh, benefited from the electricity, seemingly benefited from the electricity created uh, in producing these uh, spent fuel rods, that we now you know, take responsibility for what we had a part in creating and do the right thing. We need uh, a, a sound public policy decisions uh, and discussions uh, we need to base them on science. And at this point, you know, we really need to be patient because we really need a process if we're going to guard this uh, material safely for hundreds of thousands of years. That's what's at stake here. So we have to do it and we have to do it right. You know, Chris, the, the F-35s are roaring across the skies here, and I didn't hear the the end of what uh, what you said. Uh, are, but I think that you segued into how we, as a, not members of the panel, how we we can as taking Vermonters taking responsibility. How can we? Uh, we how can we re besides a, a program like this and your many different organizations you belong to, how can we uh, make our voices heard and, and how can we uh, act upon what we have learned? 
Well, uh, there are uh, websites you can visit uh, for Citizens Awareness Network, um, the Nuclear Information and Resource Service, which is nirs.org, to learn more about these uh, proposals regarding centralized interim storage of the spent fuel. It's also important that uh, after you've learned more about the issue, uh, that we communicate with our politicians. Uh, in particular, uh, Peter Welsh, Congressman Peter Welsh, has been very supportive of this concept. And I, along with many others, have tried to convince him that moving this, uh, this uh, waste uh, temporarily to a, you know, to a site is uh, irresponsible and dangerous, that we ought to be figured, figuring out where it should go and uh, use science and good public policy, and then only move it once. So communicating with Peter Welsh is important, as well as Bernie and Patrick Leahy. Uh, in addition to that, it's important that we uh, uh, let our opinions be known to the Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel. And at each uh, nuclear decommissioning or endicap panel meeting, uh, there is an opportunity for the public uh, to comment. And many of us do that regularly and routinely. In the age of COVID, uh, we're now um, looking at the panel meeting um, uh, remotely on a, on a digital platform, which means actually that more people in the area, uh, many people from Burlington who, not a lot of people drive from Burlington to Vernon to go to these meetings, but people from Burlington or uh, Montpelier or any other part of the state uh, now have the opportunity to be able to access uh, the digital platform of the uh, Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel and make their, uh, their feelings known. And I would hope that uh, uh, here on the program, you can put the uh, website up for the uh, Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel. The next meeting is on September 21st, that's a Monday, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We don't know the address uh, for the, uh, the digital address uh, for the, uh, the digital platform yet, but it will be available at the uh, Department of Public Service Endicap website. Okay, great. Now, now, Chris, could you enlighten us about the time frame? Is it? Is it? Uh, did Did you say? Am I Am I correct in understanding that you said that the panel already has agreed with uh, with Congressman Welch that it's good to transport the waste out west? Seemingly, they, they signed on to a letter um, uh, agreeing that uh, centralized interim storage was, um, was, was a preferable option for nuclear waste here in New England. Um, that's by no means a definitive position or a position that will, um, you know, see us packing up the waste and moving it anytime soon. For the most part, um, it's a federal action. And um, right now there are hearings going on in both New Mexico and Texas with regard to the environmental impact of creating these uh, high level parking lot dumps. Um, but the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, which guides all of this uh, activity, um, prohibits the creation of centralized interim storage sites uh, in the absence of uh, a permanent geologic uh, repository being identified. So uh, the companies like North Star and Waste Control Specialists are trying to work around the Nuclear Waste Policy Act and um, create a pilot project, um, which has had problems. Um, Congress has gone back and forth and now Congress is in a, as we all know, a very precarious position with regard to uh, creating um, any positive uh, public policy on many issues because of uh, what we're all facing right now. 
with with the uh, the pandemic and so forth. But right now, um, pending in Congress is uh, <clears throat> a bill called HR two six nine nine, which is the Nuclear Waste Policy Act amendments of 2019 and 2020. Um, that would be the bill that I know I'm going to ask uh, Peter Welch uh, not to support. And if he hears from enough people, maybe he'll listen to his constituents and not support it. It would amend uh, the Nuclear Waste Policy Act to allow for the creation of a centralized interim storage uh, facility uh, even if there wasn't uh, an identified uh, permanent repository, which is bad public policy. You just don't want to move this dangerous material twice. Which brings me to the last um, uh, and most important issue for uh, Vermont itself is we should be fortifying and hardening uh, the storage site in Vernon. Because it's even, even if all... Uh, of the nuclear industry's dreams came true, this, this material is not going to be moving any place anytime soon. So, so we need to, let, to harden that site and monitor it carefully. Chris, could you enlighten us what, what would be the steps to harden the site and what, what would be the, the process for that? The most important uh, part of the hardening would be placing berms, uh, earthen berms, hot, tall earthen berms around uh, the parking lot or pad, storage pad, uh, that the casks full of this waste now sit on. In addition, you would want them spaced properly. You would want uh, full-time 24-7 uh, monitoring, which in our digital world is not a, an impossible uh, uh, feat. And, uh, you know, we would just want to make sure that the monitoring is carried out by responsible parties like the department of the vermont department of health yeah and but chris at this point who would pay for that and uh so who uh if if it if it's possible to do that uh who would make that decision would the federal would the feds make it or would the state government uh, make it? I, to be honest with you the 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 responsibility for it would lie with uh as I understand it, with the owners, with North Star. Uh, and North Star has um, access to our money, meaning you know, the decommissioning trust fund. Uh, the, uh, the cost of hardening that, uh, uh, that storage pad uh, is not exorbitant. And uh, I'm certain they, they uh, might be able to get uh, um, special permission from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to access a decommissioning fund to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, too, I know this is going, this is a short program to activate Vermonters, and you've given us many uh, links to move forward on this. So uh, could you give us some closing advice on this issue as we are I hope, hopefully, we're in the last quarter of the pandemic, but no, nobody really knows what is going to happen in, in the right. near future. Well, it's unfortunate that a lot of the proceedings with regard to establishing these sites um, in New Mexico and Texas are going forward um, uh, virtually instead of having uh, uh, robust uh, uh, public meetings. Uh, the people in New Mexico and Texas have asked repeatedly uh, to just put it on hold for now and wait for better times uh, to have what is an incredibly difficult discussion uh, for the people living in those communities. We need, as a community here in Vermont, to be very aware of the environmental justice ramifications of what's going on here. Uh, this doesn't have to happen now, and this doesn't have to target these communities if we as Vermonters don't want it. We should be taking responsibility for the waste that we've created. We should be storing it safely, and we really need, you know, to embrace the science and sound public policy that it's going to take to get us, not just as Vermonters, but the entire country, uh, to come up with an adequate um, and equitable solution um, 
to this, this problem. And it's, it's bad news everywhere you turn when you talk about this kind of high level nuclear waste. There really aren't any good solutions. So we've got to find the best ones that we can and, and fight hard to see to it that we don't cut corners, that we don't kick the can down the road, that we in fact, you know, <laughs> responsibly embrace the problem we've created and, and do the right things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris Williams. And, and we will continue this discussion as the, as the issue is not going to go away soon. And, and thank you for your many, many decades being an, a, a peace activist and anti-nuclear activist. You are a, a hero to many of us, Chris Williams, Vermont yeah. Yankee Decommissioning Alliance, Citizens Awareness Network, and, and uh, the other organization. Uh, the Nuclear Information and Resource Service, nirs.org, based in Washington, D.C. And, and thank you for this program, Margaret, and your commitment yeah. to, uh, to yeah. keeping the public informed on these important issues, as yeah. boring as they may be sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but as timely. Okay, on, onward together. Thank you, Chris Williams. Thanks, Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy. Till next time. <laughs>